Kyle here from All Media Reviews. I'm um, here to do. Um, I mean, there's stuff coming up. I got to update the calendar. I'm not going to do that quite yet. Maybe by the end of this week. And um, and uh, I got stuff, other stuff to do. Plus, hopefully, 1980 can get done this week. Based on the projection to do, I did only one a week, which I'm doing right now. <laughs> I'd be doing this through till summer. I don't know if that's going to happen. I want to maybe do expedite some of this, but. The topic today, though, I just kind of made this kind of quickly. Um, uh, a channel, a friend of mine, a guy named Josh Runquist from Heavy Debris Fiends. Um, he's been doing this. Well, he's had a podcast for Heavy Debris Fiends previously, um, that drummer guy. But then he, like, re rebooted it, rebranded it last, late last, it was like last summer. It was like, maybe it was earlier. It was like middle of the summer last year in 2023. With the Metal Fairy um, is a co-host for that, um, and they do a lot of hot, different topics, not only about music. Like my channel, he talks about video games, he talks about movies, he talks about. Um, I mean, obviously, the the primary thing, the most, the majority of the the content is about music, specifically mostly metal. Um, he knows tons of metal, although you know, there's tons of metal out there, so he would he would probably admit that. He doesn't know everything. He knows a ton, though, and he listens to tons of music every year, so it's mostly metal. But um, this podcast, they cover more stuff besides the metal and music. They talk about, um, like I said, television, video games, movies, just news. Um, what else? I can't remember. Anyway, check it out. He does them at once a week. The, the heavy, they've done 27 of them, so, uh, something like that. Heavy debriefings, if I'm counting correct. But they, they did a Q&A. They, like, asked people for questions, and I submitted a few questions. Um, it was maybe about a month, month and a half ago or whatever. One of the questions I asked is, what's your Dream Festival lineup? Now, the Dream Festival lineup thing, it's a common topic on message boards. It's kind of like your dream band, which the dream band is just hypothetical. And the truth, my, my feeling about a lot of times with it, not always, like, dream you know, like uh, super groups per se, is it's better on paper than it actually often comes out. Mostly because you often need either a sound songwriting chemistry, or you need one really good songwriter. Um, when you're trying to combine too many songwriters, they end up being too many. It can end up being too many cooks in the kitchen. Anyway, so he, him, and and the Metal Fairy did their Dream Festival lineup. Um, they did it pretty epic. They've been to Prague Power USA like I have more recently, but not that recently. But I went in 2001 twice and 2000, 2002, 2004, 2009. Um, but Prague Power USA is a festival. It's almost like a mini cruise in some terms of the, like the pre-cruise, pre-metal cruise and prog cruise where they, they have, it's not just like five bands. It's five bands multiple days so they did i i looked at metal fairies list it's on facebook um i think she had this is what this i mirrored what she what she put down for the first day which would presumably be a thursday five the second day six the third day so five friday six saturday and then six sunday um so i did that and then i'm just like coming up a lot of this has to do with like fantasy of what who I who would who I've never seen live before um they might be broken up if the musicians are not alive anymore you could do a tribute and all the details on that I didn't fully include but then I end up including two more lineups of which would be part of this festival or maybe another festival but not like that whole four day thing, just one day, which I guess you could say ultimately this is almost more like a cruise full or it could be a full week, I suppose. You could say just forget four days, it's a full week. So anyway, I'll just go over it as quickly as I can. Um, and I could have put physical copies just, you know, unfortunately as much as these are alphabetized and everything, and all my CDs are at least consolidated by band artists for the most part. They're not alphabetized and somewhat. It will take me too long, too too long to actually, you know, um, track down and corral all these physical copies. 
my, I want to try it, you know, time is short. So I'm just going to make a, I'll just put an image up with, I don't know, all of them or, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, but we'll see. So, I'll just go like this. So the, the first day is only four. So let's just, okay, we're going to say hypothetically this is all one festival. It's pretty massive and this thing would cost, I'd have to win the, the, the Powerball or something to afford all this. And But let's just say, so this would be, this would start on Tuesday. Go from Tuesday to Sunday. Basically a full week. Uh, day one or Tuesday is only four bands. Um, so it's not heavy and everyone can't always make it that day. Let's just say it's here. in my. This is the All Media Reviews Festival and it's held in the Twin Cities. So, you know, I'm both, I'm both, you know, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, curating the, the lineup and I'm also the host town. <laughs> So you have Fiacra um, starting off, you know, who's not that active. He's playing with Annie B's band. It's kind of flipped. Annie B was in his band. Um, Self, who I've never seen. You, you would have to have Matt Mahaffey with probably a backing band. Um, and I did not include Toe Hider in here. It's no spoiler, but maybe I'll do another one of these and Toe Hider will have to be showing up. But there's no way that the second version of this is going to be able to match this first one, though, like most of them. But anyway... So, Fiacra, Self, then you'd have a reunited jellyfish. That's the longest of maybe the of all the long shots on this this whole thing. And then an XTC tribute, which the jellyfish reunion plus XTC with Andy Partridge. Or an XTC tribute, I guess, you know, because Andy's, not, I don't know. So, that would be day one. That would be sort of like your quirky power pop. Uh, Fiacra is sort of an outlier anyway, but, you know... He is poppy at points, but he's all over the place. But, um, so, and, because I didn't, I didn't, like, I didn't curate these 100% to, like, go with. One day specifically does, but, okay, so, day two, which would be Wednesday, is more leaning toward, sort of, the rhythmic, electronic side, for the most part. Yeah, and a lot of percussion, and a lot of homages to retro parts, but anyway. You'd have Lay to the Pier, you know, with La Priest music also, of course their drummer passed away, but they'd have to get in, they'd have a reunion. Then you'd have Eldrin, and they wouldn't be doing dark, The Dark Side of the Moon, they'd be doing their own music, obviously. They maybe would do all the Mr. Information Aged. Um, then you'd have Small Leak Sing Ships, um, which at some point I might see them, and it wouldn't be as significant for me to see them at a festival like this, because, um, obviously because I've seen them. Um, then you'd have Pepe Deluxe, which would be a massive deal. I don't know how, how difficult it would be to get the whole, the, the singers and all the, the, the instruments would have to be, some of them wouldn't be as true, unfortunately. Um, they'd have to be sequenced or something, unfortunately. And then you'd have Apes and Androids, the reunion, which seems like a super long shot as well, almost as big of a long shot as Jellyfish, including they would do music from Call Florence Powell, um, and you'd have them even have Kale Parks join them in the encore, and they do some of the, um, do Swift Mars EP. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe Brian would throw, Brian Jacobs would throw in some of his solo music, maybe some of those, those jams from that one solo record he put out. So that's, that's Wednesday. Thursday goes up to six bands. Now this is the, one of the big staple, this is how this idea kind of came up, uh, a little while ago, and I posted something on Twitter last year about it. This is basically the deer, the hardest core of the Deer Hunter like music appealing to the Deer Hunter fan base. It's Deer Hunter Day based, the Deer Hunter Day. So you'd have Hotel the Laughing Tree first, then you'd have Dirt Poor Robbins, then you'd have the Reign of Kindo, then you'd have Ben Sinster, then you'd have the Family Crest, and you close out with the Deer Hunter, including a trios reunion for the encore. They do. Um, you know, this Armistice and maybe one or two other tracks. I don't know. Um, never got to see Casey with Trios. I only got to see Trios once, received under Sirens. So so that's Thursday. So day, that Friday, day five, day, day four rather. Sorry, four days in. This is the day of a lot of tributes, really. Um, not entirely, but a lot of, and more, a little more proggy. But uh, the first one is a Jeff Buckley tribute. I've never seen Jeff Buckley's music played live. I don't know who I would put like Dave. I'd, I'd select like Dave Vives, um, 
Jimmy Necco, obviously, we get a bunch. I didn't even include those details. You get a bunch of singers that could do Buckley well. Um, who's the other one? Oh, um, Scott Matthews. Get Scott Matthews, D Dave Vives, get get um, get Jimmy. Um, and then you could also have Jimmy, I didn't even think about that, following the Jeff Buckley tribute. They would have to do also some music from sketches, not just the gray stuff. Uh, do a mixture, of course. Um, Never Any White Lights would follow them, and you could have Jimmy sit in with them doing White Dove, uh, White, White Dove Colored Sky and uh, Final Hymn. Uh, or final hymn, but never seen never any white lights. Of course, that's that's not that unusual. That actually is conceivable potentially for the right timing and money. Um, so third, uh, so you that would be like in the late early afternoon. Sabotage with Zach Stevens. Now that of course is a little challenging because Paul O'Neill's not around. Obviously, no Chris Oliva. Paul O'Neill is more of the the songwriter composer though with Sabotage, but. They are going to do that last time, you know, but the key is to get Zach Stevens, and they'd have to do a fair amount from Handful of Rain, some of the, the subsequent albums, and also, um, you could throw in Hollow Mountain King and a few others. I mean, I would want a mixture. I did see Sabotage live once, but not with Zach. I did see them uh, do the, the, whatever, Weapons of Mass Destruction. They did some of the stuff at Prague Power, but not with Zach Stevens, so... Next, related, Banu Tour with Sabotage, we would have... John Arch and doing definitely would do both parts of a twist of fate. Get Portnoy to make an appearance. Um, and of course John um, Jim Matheos, of course. Then Arch Matheos and Fate's Warning. So I don't know if we'd have Ray. I mean that would be the ultimate if you have Ray make an appearance for that. They could do like a duet. They did do that, I think. And as much as I kinda have lean back a little bit on the Arch Matheos. I'd still would like to see some of that live. And they'd obviously do the, the Arch Fates Warning stuff. I'd even find it compelling to see Arch try and do some of the more, the, 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 the Ray Alder Fates Warning stuff. It would be different, but I'd be curious. This is a special event, a special festival. That would be, that'd be the cherry on top of the Sunday, of course. But So next up, another one that's a bucket list that will never happen, but... I'll never see Andre Matos, the great vocalist from originally Viper, and then of course Angra and Shaman, and then his solo band, and sing with Avantasia and some others. An Andre Matos tribute. Who could they get to do it? The one name I have think of in recent years is Toehider, you know, Michael Mills. Um, he, they both did a cover of Wuthering Heights for Kate Bush, uh, and the guy has super crazy range. If there's one guy I could think of, I mean, Daniel Gilnow and Michael Tangerman from, you know, the late Superior were some other names that might be in mind. You need a singer that has really good range, but doesn't sound thin and doesn't sound cliche power metal. Um, that's my thought. Otherwise, if Jimmy, Jimmy is still there, give Jimmy an echo a shot at it, as much as it's sort of a little out his side of his wheelhouse. He did sing some in some sort of special prog metal video game project a few years back, you know. Um, anyway, next up in the evening, we'd have a reunion of fish with Marillion. Again, this would draw in so many people, this would, it'd be crazy. People would want to go to this. Um, unfortunately, fish doesn't have the voice he once had, but, um, and they'd have to play Grendel. They would have to play Grendel. Um, the rest of it, and, you know, maybe to see fish and Hogarth do a duet with some of the Hogarth stuff and the fish stuff, you know, that would be the other part, really big mix, kind of like... With sabotage and uh, or with um, John Arch and, and and the Fates Warning stuff. Um, so then, of course, to close out <clears throat> Friday night, the big Kevin Gilbert tribute. And what would you have done at that tribute? The set lists. The first thought would be all of the shaming of the troop, with Nick DiVergilio, with uh, Dave Kersner, and with some of the others. Um, I'd want to get Fiacra to, to give it a go, actually. Um, Fiacra, and there's a couple other singers. Maybe Casey. Um, I would also really, really want to hear them do a few giraffe tracks and maybe some of the stuff off Call Me Kai to kind of fulfill that sort of fantasy of the Kevin Gilbert tribute. Okay. So, if that's the week, because that would have originally going to be the Sunday, 
I added these other two lists. So then the weekend are two kind of genre-based, somewhat based festivals, parts of the festival. I call it Empire Fest, and these are just, some of these are kind of obvious, some of them are just kind of random bands that I've never seen, but these lists could easily be, insert dozens of other names that are among my favorites. So, Empire Fest, Modern Progressive Art Rock Festival Day, Saturday, Long Distance Callings, the opening band. They'd have to do a lot from, um, from Avoid the Light. They'd also have to do something from Trips, get the singer who was on Avoid, on Trips especially. Um, then you'd have Archive, doing a lot of You All Look the Same to Me, some of the stuff from Controlling Crowds. I would love to see them once. Oh, they're, they're a fantastic band. I don't know how they are live, I'm, but just their music. They've got so many albums. Pure Reason Revolution, never seen them. Full Reunion, you, Chloe has to be there, and they do... They pretty much need to do all of the Dark Third, and then they throw in an encore with a couple tracks from some of the re other records, especially AVO. Then in the you know the, the last band before the evening session, you get Mike Van Art, and he reunites the all the Ocean Size guys with Mark, including Mark Heron, and they do at least they do they, we get a mixture of Ocean Size and Van Art music. Um, I probably would lean toward doing more ocean size stuff, either all the frames or a mixture of frames in everyone's position, especially those two. But then you'd have to have some Vinart stuff. Then there's one that kind of just, probably in terms of order, probably would I would have probably stuck higher. I just put it down. Clan Zoo Reunion. I know um, the guy from Clan Zoo, Gavin DeBara, um, or Declan DeBara, rather. He uh, He's like writing in Hollywood now, but... Um, have them do the complete Rua or yeah, just a reunion would be fantastic. And then to close out the night on Saturday night with the, the proper required ensemble and get Casey Grisendo to show up, the River Empires plays, you know, obviously all of, all of, um, all of the, the, the epilogue record, you know, if there's enough time. All right, so <laughs> then on Sunday... You know, I almost could have flip-flopped these two, but I, yeah, I actually probably would have flipped that. Should, the Empire Fest probably would have made more sense to go on sat, on Sunday. But sat, Sunday, it turns out in my order right now, Extreme Prog Metal Fest. So I just picked a few different bands that are bands that I've loved, to, I've wanted to see. And in the order, I didn't really think about that much. So I guess if I'd reorder this, I would probably open it up with, yeah, I'd open it up, up with Subterranean Masquerade with Paul Coor. And they do a lot of the stuff from um, Suspended Animation Dreams, especially. Um, then you'd have, yeah, then I would probably put In Vain. In Vain doing a lot of Enigma, some of the, the Ladder Rain stuff. See, In Vain would be awesome. Um, then Spawn of Possession, the most technical band of the whole festival, pretty much. Never seen them, wanted to see them. You know, I've seen Sicketh, I've seen Unexpect. I've seen, um, I've even seen Meshuggah, you know, even though, you know, I've seen Between the Bear to Me, Dream Team, all of these technical metal bands. Um, I've seen Gojira. Spawn Possession it takes the cake for me, and I've never seen them. So then transitioning, we'd have, then you'd have Burst. All of, all of Lazarus Bird, especially. Then we'd get a special evening set with, I would probably go Green Carnation. Of course, they did it at Prog Power, Live Day, Dave Darkness, the entire thing. And then, to close it all off, we'd get Maul of the Well doing the complete bath and leaving your body map. So that would be kind of... I don't know if I would flip-flop that to be on Saturday. I probably would, because Saturday at Metal always feels better on Saturday than Sunday, but I don't know. The the the, the Empire Day and the Extreme Metal prog, Extreme Prog Metal Day, the choices are sort of... There's a lot of stuff to draw from in terms of bucket list bands and performances that I've never seen that could go in there. But this is the somewhat the cream of the crop of stuff that I've never seen that I liked. I didn't include... There's a few bands I've never... Like the Tea Party and I'm Mother Earth that weren't on this list. I've never seen either of those two. Image and Heap, um, Team Me. There's a lot of bands that I, I enjoy a lot of, but these are a lot of these are long-time bucket lists that um, would, would be, you know, kind of <laughs> be able to cross off my list. Um, the whole thing would probably cost about about five hundred million dollars, but well, maybe not quite that much. But um, it just logistically wouldn't work, I'm sure. 
But, you know, again, that's why this is a dream or fantasy set list. So who is on, on your fantasy set list, even for one day? The only thing I'll say about this, having gone to those Prague Par USA festivals and gone to Nearfest, even going like the Progressive Nation to an extent, having like many bands in one time, it's a bit taxing just as a listener. I mean, the, every year at Nearfest, and eh, not so much at Nearfest, but at the Prague Power Festivals, there were always bands I did not... Like, I didn't see all their set, or some of them I didn't see any of their set. And there were always bands middle of the week that started that I didn't see. Just for logistics, for energy, for cost. There's a lot of factors, and so to realistic... I concluded years ago to do this, I would just want one day and, like, four bands, and I'd be happy. Um... In fact, you could just pull those names out of a hat if they were just take four of those names in one one concert. That would be enough, because seeing you know thirty bands in the span of five six days is. When I was in my twenties, I probably wouldn't have been able to have a problem with that. But I would be I would be drained and, I mean, as much as I would love it, I think more of a, a more of a realistic thing is like, these would each one of these would be one a week, so it'd be like. It'd be like a month's worth of, of festivals. You'd have one one band a night even would even work. Or maybe not one band a night that one week. Yeah, maybe that would work. One month at like you every one there's six days. Instead of having six days, you'd have six months. And you have one concert one week for six months. Not one band a night every day of that week or whatever one day. One night once a month for six months. And I I mean again, it doesn't seem logistically feasible, but from a standpoint of enjoying it, getting to appreciate it in, in, in a reasonable amount of time without having to um, feel like you're kind of cramming all this stuff into a short window. Because it's it's overdose to me. Some people don't, wouldn't think so. It became that. That's why if I did go to, um, to like Cruise to the Edge, I would probably feel like I'm being overdosed. If I, I've always wanted to go to the Marillion weekend, and I might even feel like doing that. I'd like to try it sometime, but... I, I definitely have that case where I'm amongst a, a lot of stuff from one band or one thing for like more than a day and change two days, and I feel like a little it's a little overkill. And I want that's why I've always had this mentality after I've seen like a, a couple concerts. I don't want to think about music so much. I want to think about other things like movies and television. So then when I get sort of in a marathon of television, like a TV show I binge, or I'm seeing a bunch of movies, what do I think about? I want to think about sports or like you know the news or or something comedy or or music i don't want to think about that specific thing that sci-fi or whatever so or that book i like that's why i like variety to me it's about the buffet i'm a buffet entertainment consumer whereas some people oh totally all metal you know all prog that's what they want they could they never get sick of it i i unfortunately have become burnt out i burn out on things and food too the same thing happened you can ask my wife will test that you know foods i love i often will burn out on eventually what was the thing we had recently oh those paydays those chocolate payday candy bars just bought those on a whim about two months ago two and a half months ago my wife loved them started buying them they're like nut rolls but there was chocolate I'm kind of burnt out on them. I can't eat them anymore. I mean, I could eat them, but I don't. I don't have a longing to eat them. That made the, the taste doesn't do as much for me as it did two months ago. So I maybe have a condition where I burn out on certain things. But once you kind of stop and then you know, then you go back to it. Then you 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 know why you missed it. Uh, then all like six months from now, a year from now, I probably would be fine eating the chocolate payday. So anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Please give it a like uh, and leave a comment, and we'll see you next time.